So welcome back, Pokemon trainers. We are here now for the the, the lo almost last round. We're in round seven right now, and we got another great match for you. Uh, I'm here with Romy right now, and uh, we're gonna go and feature a really interesting game between uh, David Kutesh from uh, the Czech Republic uh, against uh, Leonardo Bonanomi from uh, Italy. Yeah, definitely. Both of these players are 5-1 here, so they yeah. kind of like need to win this out to actually have a chance at top potting. Yeah, exactly. So they both, uh, they're, they're kind of on the edge. They're really close, but with two rounds to go, not quite there yet. Uh, they definitely need to win one of these two to have a good shot at it. Um, with this top 16 cut, uh, going X2 gives you already a better chance than a usually top 8 cut would give you. Um, but I'm pretty sure that these guys want to go 6-1 into the last round. Um, because I think going 6-1 into the last round would almost gu guarantee you that, that top 16 spot. Uh, if your resistance is, is okay at least. But I assume if you're 5-1 at this point, your resistance is going uh, to be quite good. Yeah, definitely. These uh, players, both just they need to win here. I think there's a lot of stake here. So I'm really interested. It's like... I assume both of these players are just going to bring their A game. And David Kutash, you know, we've seen him on stream before in all the regionals, and he's always done pretty well. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think both players are now ki are now ready already. So we're going to jump into team preview pretty soon. Um, so I'm pretty looking forward to this. Uh, David Kutash, of course, also really well known for um, Worlds this year, in which he actually stormed through day one, going undefeatedly there. Uh, so now he's doing again really well at this, uh, this regional. So I, I'd be pretty interesting to see at uh, what he brings because I think he al he always has kind of interesting teams, uh, pretty offensive. So uh, that's always always fun to look at. Yeah, and we are going to see team preview here. So on David's side we have Incineroar, Groudon, Xerneas, Cortana, the Salazzle, Tapu Fini, and on Lorenzo's side we actually have Amoongus, Xerneas, Tapu Coco, Cortana, Incineroar, and the Lunala. Yeah, so immediately uh, the Salazzle kind of gets my attention on David's team. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of that standard Xerneas Groudon core, and then there's suddenly a Salazzle. That's a really interesting Pokemon. Uh, has access to a lot of support moves, gets Fake Out, uh, gets Encore, uh, has a Step Fire move, uh, Step Poison moves as well. Uh, so it's definitely an interesting pick there. Uh, and now we see another Lulala uh, on stream as well, uh, on Leo's team, which I think it looks kind of to be like uh, some kind of uh, all six variant. Um, just slightly different, uh, maybe making his own twist uh, onto that team. Uh, and we see two Xerneas again. Uh, yeah, it's something we've seen a lot, and Xerneas is just such a big threat. So what do you think the leads are going to be here? Uh, yeah, we're going to see. I think I think both of these players um, do have kind of a Xerneas setup team, um, the way that, they, that these teams look, especially with David, with the double fake out that he has. Um, but I think if I look at David's team, this, this Lunala might actually do a good job as well in, in countering a lot of these Pokemon that David has. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Yeah, we do actually see the Salazzo and Xerneas coming out from David here. And we see actually also that Ludunala faced with that Tapu Coco. Yeah, so Salazzo immediately offers that fake out pressure. Uh, with Ludunala's ghost typing, of course, it can't be faked out. Uh, so it does immediately threaten this uh, Xerneas. But Xerneas should be able to take anything that this, um, uh, that this Lunala throws at it. Um, but it could have something like Psych Up or something like that to, to cover for this, this kind of Xerneas setup. Uh, but I think if you're David, you're probably Pretty, pretty safe to go for a fake out and try to get a Geomancy up. Yeah, I think, you know, Lunala is probably just not going to be able to KO with Xerneas here. And we oh, see no fake out. No, we do actually top of Koga going for Electro Web. The Celezzle does avoid it. It's a really interesting play that uh, David decided to actually go for Taunt here, maybe being scared of something like White Guard? Yeah, or a Trick Room. Uh, you could of be expecting course, a Trick yeah. Room from that Lunala. And Lunala is actually moving last, uh, which could actually be, it could be an indication that it is going for the Trick Room mode, which would be a great read by David if it actually goes for that. Uh, we're going to see in a minute, after this Xerneas set up a Geomancy, uh, as we expected there. Um, that Electro Web on Salazzo could be big in the end, because uh, it, it could have maybe, yeah, exactly, because it could have maybe practiced uh, a, a focus search, for example. Yeah, it's something um, that you see a lot with this, you know, a little ooh, bit. Oh, it is Psych Up. Wow. Did yeah. we just see Psych Up? I yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, then now suddenly this Lunala is a really, really big threat. Yeah, and I'm really surprised that David actually just called that turn one. He was like, I'm going to call this right away. <laughs> I'm going to taunt it. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because it could also have gone for a trick room. It could have also gone for like something like that. Uh, so it's pretty safe by uh, what David did there. Yeah, we do see Tapu Coco going for another Electro Web here, just making sure he just lowers the speed enough here and probably just break the uh, Sash on this Lazo maybe. 
And we do actually see Solalazo going for a sludge bomb here into that Tapu Coco. Oh, wow. And it's actually hanging on with his focus sash. So we are going to see the item on his Tapu Coco here. And we see the Lunala going for a big side shock here. Yeah, and it should be able to get rid of the Salazzle there easily, uh, as it does. Uh, I might have, I've, I kind of expected the Salazzle to maybe go for the, the Lunala there, just to break the Shadow Shield and make Moomblast a KO onto that Lunala. Um, but instead, he probably wanted to get some damage onto the Tapu Coco, maybe thinking it was a Salt Fest, uh, but it was actually Focus Sash instead. Yeah, it's actually not something we've seen a lot on Tapu Coco, and in this case it just worked really well. So David maybe just not expecting a Focus Sash here and just wanting to make sure it KOs this Tapu Coco. Yeah, and if this is now uh, a knockoff Cortana coming in, uh, this is pretty free for David to just go for Dazzling Gleam and knockoff, and Leonardo is kind of in the on the back foot here. Uh, he would need some other tech to maybe stop Cernius, like a red card or... Uh, like a red card on his Amoongas or something, because he's going to struggle against the Cernius at this point. Yeah, we are actually going to see the Incineroar switch in here, just trying to maybe get a fake-out support in in the next turn, trying to maybe stall out the Cernius until this Tapu Coco or any other Mon in the back could possibly deal with it. But it is, of course, just going to die to a Dazzling Gleam here. It's actually doing quite a lot of damage on his Incineroar here. Bringing it to over half, and we do see Cortana going for a knockoff here. So it is actually pretty was well a good turn for David here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but it was kind of a turn that, Leon that Leonardo had to do there, or the Lancer had to do there. Um, yes, he took a lot of damage, but now I think his way to get back into this game is he has to kind of call this this mind game correctly. Because um, if he fakes out this, uh, oh, he actually goes for his own Xerneas instead. I was thinking maybe he's going to fake out the Xerneas and go for Psycho with his Lunala. Uh, but he definitely doesn't want to take the knockoff, obviously. Um, but that still puts him in a difficult position, because I think if you're David, you can probably just go for a Moomblast onto the Xerneas, as well as a knockoff. And which one of the targets you fake out, it doesn't matter. It, it still stops the Geomancy from the opposing Xerneas. Yeah, we are actually going to see Incineroar go for a fake out into the Xerneas. Just maybe also being a little, little bit scared of another Dazzling Gleam. And we see yeah. Cortana going for a knockoff into the Xerneas here. It is of course going, and it is still going for a Geomancy. Yeah. It now means the Geomancy is going to take two turns to fully charge, and this Xerneas is going to be really, really fragile. Yeah, and it's going to go down to a Moomblast at any point now, and we've already seen kind of the handshake between <laughs> Lorenzo and David there. Um, Lorenzo knows that this game is over, and that David uh, definitely takes this game one. Uh, all of that, that kind of impressive taunt read in turn one. Um, so that's Salazzle doing a good job there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Salazzle is just going for straight for a taunt. It was just so, so important yeah. for him. Because if he would have gotten a, the Psychic up, then it would have been over. Yeah, because especially with the Shadow Shield, that, that <laughs> Lunala would have been really bulky. And a Psy Shark at plus two, that's going to do a lot of damage. And that's just going to ignore the Geomancy boost as well, because it hits on the physical side. Um, but now we're just going to see a Moomblast into the Xerneas, I assume, and a Sacred Sword into this Incineroar, uh, picking up the double knockout. Yeah, that was just um, a really obvious play for David yeah. here, and Lenzra just really couldn't do anything about it. No, and I think he's just, um, he, since they already shook, uh, shook hands, they're just he's just thinking about his Game 2 plan for sure. Um, just playing this out, I mean, why not? You're on stream. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, and, you, and you can take your time for your, your Game 2 plan. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, maybe it's just now going to be a little bit more, okay, how do I deal with this Salazzle? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just, I'm really a bit surprised that uh, it looked like his only way that he had to stop the Xerneas was that Psych Up. And that doesn't <laughs> seem like a, such a reliable uh, Xerneas answer to me at all. Uh, especially because he's one of the few teams that we've seen today that doesn't actually have a Steel type on it. No, definitely. I mean, things as like Among Us can potentially stop a Xerneas, mm -hmm. but things like a Spore or a Clear Smog and Topo Cocos aren't sometimes running taunt, which yeah. of course also is still a po po possibility. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah. I mean, if, if he had taunt, I would kind of assume that he would have went for it instead of the Electro Web. Um, but maybe he thought, if I go for Electro Web as well as the Psych Up, uh, I not only get the boost from the Xerneas, and I also get the speed advantage as well. So it, it made sense, uh, but he just didn't expect the taunt at all. No. Which I think is pretty reasonable, because that fake out would have been uh, what I was predicting as well, definitely that turn one. Yeah, definitely, because I would have definitely just expected a fake out here, and it's just really, really important. Um, these players are about to get into game two here. Um, yeah, what do, you, do you think David is going to adjust something? Yeah, I mean, what he did, game one, works really, really well for him. Yeah, so I think and Lorenzo is just really the one that like has to go for the reads here. Yeah, exactly. So there's probably not a lot of reason for, for David to actually change it up. Um, I mean, he still might have. Um, 
Because if he, if he expects Lorenzo to change it up, I mean, I expect Lorenzo now to at least go for the Amoongus mode, because he needs a better Xerneas answer for sure. Uh, and Amoongus at least with Clear Smog and maybe a potential Spore as well, uh, at least has some way to stop the Xerneas, because the Psycho proved to be not enough to stop the Xerneas, especially once it gets countered. Yeah, definitely. Uh, maybe some of these Amoongus are actually running red card. Mm -hmm. Of course, also just an option, you know, just switch it in. But it's still, if you bring it in a bag, it's still going to be a 50-50 maybe. Yeah. And we are actually going to see the same leads here, at least from Lorenzo. Yeah, so David actually did change it up. David um, did change it up. He did bring his Cortana here. Yeah. And that's actually quite good for him as well, because now <laughs> he, he kind of offers the one the one thing he can do is he can double the Lunala, he can go for a Sludge Bomb and a knockoff onto it. Uh, first of all, breaking the Shadow Shield, and then knockoff should be able to pick up the KO there, uh, which is why Renzo is actually going to switch out the Lunala instead. Yeah, I don't think the Lunala is in a really good position no. here. Just, you know, bringing this Incineroar is think just a really, really smart play. Just making sure you, you still have that Shadow Shield when you bring it back in. And we see Topo Coco going for a Protect here. And <laughs> again, no fake out. He's just yeah, and he's just gonna go for double up. And I'm pretty sure yeah, that's gonna be a knockoff into that slot as well. Yeah. Yeah, it is actually kind of just not utilizing that fake out. No, but it makes it makes a lot of sense. He just wanted to break the shadow shield, making knockoff uh, a clean KO there. Uh, but that was a good incineroar switch in by Lorenzo. I mean, sure he loses the berry, but he gets his fake out pressure now, and Coco is in a pretty decent position at the moment. Um, Celezzle usually don't have room to carry Protect, so it's also kind of a safe way to maybe go for a Fake Out into that Celezzle, maybe double up onto it, uh, maybe a Fake Out Electro Web. No, we do actually see the Fake Out going into that Cortana, and ah. we do actually see Topo Coco just going for another Electro Web. It's pretty much the only thing we've seen yeah. it do so far, and it's actually getting a critical hit on that Cortana. Yeah, that's an Assault Vest Cortana. <laughs> if that's a critical <laughs> hit, that's definitely Assault Vest Cortana. Yeah, we do actually see the... Um, oh, there's another critical wow. hit here now. This, this game is really going great here. <laughs> we do actually see Celezzo tagging into that Incineroar instead yeah. of the Tapu Coco here. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting there. Uh, you would assume that they, he kind of wants to get rid of the Tapu Coco at this point, because Incineroar is already quite low. Um, and now it's kind of interesting. I mean, this has to be a really fast Incineroar if after one Electro up it's going to be faster than Cortana. Which, so I'm assuming that Cortana is still going to be faster here. Uh, which and Tapu Coco should not be able to pick up a KO onto, onto that Cortana at this point. Um, it also needs to go for something like Thunderbolt to even pick up the Celezzo from this range. Yeah, probably. So I do think we're going to see Lorenzo go for a Thunderbolt. Yeah, and I think maybe also he wants to try and get Lunala back in, because now once he finally removed these answers to Lunala, uh, it could look better for him, but not with the Incineroar coming in. No, definitely. Incineroar is not a mon. Lunala wants to face down here. And I think it's really smart from David, you know, switching out his Celezzo, just making sure he can use it later on. And we do just yeah. see Topo Coco going for a full switch here, just not wanting to stay in against a possible Sludge Bomb. Yeah, and just wanting to make sure that he gets the KO in Celezzo as well, because we've seen that Electra wasn't enough, so a full switch would have done the job there. So a uh, good switch by David. And yeah, it does bring in Ulnala instead at this point. Yeah, and we see Cortana actually going for a oh. leaf plate into that, what used to be in Topo Coco here. And we see Incineroar going for a U turn. So oh, Cortana deciding, yeah, exactly, just deciding also not to KO the Incineroar here because no, it could have also really just very simply gone for something like Sacred Sword. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe just not wanting to give him a free switch. Uh, but at this point, yeah, Zerni is actually looking decent here. Uh, he still has to be careful about the knockoff pressure for sure. Yeah, there are of course now two months on the field that can <laughs> use knockoff. Yeah, and but I mean, I the Cortana is the only thing that's threatening the Zerni with knockoff. Uh, the Incineroar should be too, too slow in order to really threaten it. Uh, but this Lunala does not feel safe at all at this point. Absolutely not. And we actually go and see the Xerneas just going for a Geomancy here. And I think it's really smart. Just make sure that you power her can't be knocked off. Yeah. And, you know, getting those boosts is going to put him in a really good position next yeah, turn. Yeah, but I think David just didn't go for the fake out with his uh, Incineroar, which he could definitely could have went for. Um, but m so maybe we're going to see something like a Roar. Uh, but I w oh, I really wanted to see <laughs> the Psych up there, the Geomancy Psych up. Uh, but he definitely has to worry about a knockoff as well, of course. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so this should, this should pick up the KO on Cortana from this range, uh, as it does. Yeah, it uh, is. So are we going to see a Roar then instead? Yeah, I'm really into oh, no, We are just going to see a knockoff into that Lunala, which is, of course, going to be enough to pick up the KO yeah. with another critical yeah, hit. Yeah, like this, one, this one didn't matter for sure. Definitely that's, that's a not. four times effective attack. But yeah, uh, you know, oh, safety goggles. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much a good information, actually, for a possible game tree. Yeah, but it's kind of interesting how he just ignored the uh, Xerneas there, because now it's set up. <laughs> 
And this Incineroar is not going to be able to take a Moomblast from this range. Um, Salazzle doesn't love taking it either because it has like no bulk at all. Um, and David's only way now to stop this Xerneas is his own Xerneas, which is not exactly your best Xerneas answer. No, definitely not. I do think, you know, he just has to make sure that he also gets up the Geomancy, but mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure how in this point. No, uh, because I think at this point you, you maybe need to sack your, your Celezzle to get him fake out again, but even at that point, this Tapu Koko is going to spam Electroweb and make sure that his Xerneas gets the speed advantage on uh, Lorenzo's side. So, um, yeah, this Tapu Koko is actually proving to be a lot more difficult to handle than it was in game one. Yeah, definitely. And we do see the Xerneas just going for, yeah. for a protect, not wanting to take a Moonblast here. And actually, Lorenzo possibly just calling this and going for a Moonblast into that Incineroar. It's definitely just enough to pick up a KO here. And we do see Topo Coco just going for a full switch into that protect, but like Lorenzo getting rid of the... Of, or Leonardo getting rid of the... Incineroar <laughs> um, here was really big. Yeah, um, I, I, he does get bring in the fake out now with Salazzle, but I don't know if it's enough for him to, to stop it as at this point. Um, he needs to maybe hope for an Electroweb miss, but even at that point, um, Leonardo also just has the Mons advantage at this point. So we're going to see the fake out, and I assume he's gonna, he's, he needs to go for Geomancy at this point. Yeah, we do see Topo Coco yeah, just going for for Electro Web. You know, just make sure that uh, Leonardo's Xerneas is going to be faster next turn. Yeah, which is really really safe play here, and we do see Xerneas going for a Geomancy here, of course. But so, what do you think David can actually just still do next turn? It's going to be really tough. Uh, he probably needs a critical hit on the opposing Xerneas, uh, but I don't know if he even gets a chance to do so because. The Leonardo should just fire off a Dazzling Gleam, uh, knock out the Celezzle, do a lot of damage to the opposing Xerneas, uh, and then with the Volt Switch option as well from the Stabu Coco, he can even go for another Electro Web as well if he wants to. Um, so at this point, I don't think Xerneas has the, the ability to uh, one feet 3 this entire team, and David actually re realizes that as well. Um, this player shake the hands, and looks like we're going into a nice game 3 again. Yeah, actually David won game 1 really, really confident, mm -hmm. but Leonardo really knowing in this in game two what to do and he yep. was able to just make sure that his Xerneas was set up early and then, then the from from David and yep. it got him such a big advantage there. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny how the, the guy that won actually changed up his lead and Leonardo instead just was like, okay, yes, I did lose game one, but my lead is still okay. I can still handle this and uh, yeah, he made it work in game two. And David actually changing it up, going with Salazzo and Cartana um, didn't quite work out the way he wanted it to go. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe tries to go back to his Xerneas, because Leonardo, again, we thought he might bring a Mungus, and he clearly didn't. Uh, so he, f he still thinks that his Xerneas answers are fine. Um, it, yeah, and his Xerneas answers in the end were fine, because David already was kind of too late to set up his own Xerneas. But I think if David maybe just tries to lead his Xerneas again, try to go for the hard setup, uh, Leonardo could definitely struggle more. Um, so I think that's definitely what David has to do. He just has to go back to his game one game plan. Yeah, we are going to s see the game three start here. I'm really excited to actually see these leads, see if actually both of them change it up. We do actually see Tapu Coco Lunala from Le yeah. Leonardo's side. And from David's side, we do see the Celestial journey as again. Yeah. It worked so well for him in game one. So I think it was a really good play here from him. Yeah, I agree. That's a good play. Um, <laughs> now, you, now you get this interesting mind game. Uh, are you, should you, is he now going to go for a Psych Up again? Uh, <laughs> so are you, do you have to taunt it? Or can you now safely fake with Tapu Coco? It's, it's a lot of mind games. Uh, if you're Leonardo, if you're David as well, it's, it's, it's really tricky at this point. Um, yeah, definitely. And you know, I'm really wondering, does the Tapu -ta -ta Coco actually have anything to like stop this journey? Yeah, does it have taunt? Um, or does it just not have taunt at all? Because if it doesn't have taunt, then maybe it's not even worth it to fake it out. And it does for protect. So if yeah. he goes just for a taunt and then a Geomancy again... <gasps> Oh, oh he's going for it. Yeah, because I think it was just a really safe play for yeah. him. Because Tapu Coco, it probably just can't stop the Geomancy over. He will probably already, we have seen it in game one and two. But I'm not sure if actually Protect was the play here from the Tapu Coco. No, uh, like anything, like an Electro Web, or at least getting some good damage off with a Volt Switch. Uh, I would have also not mind to see him maybe uh, Volt Switch into Incineroar, so he could fake out Psych Up next turn. Uh, but I don't love the Protect at all there. Uh, I get that he wants to serve a sash, maybe expecting a fake out, but I yeah, I don't like it. It's really going all in. And even targeting the Salazzle, not even going for the Xerneas here. 
Yeah, no, I think this uh, Lunala just was scared of that taunt, and yeah. that's why he just went for side shock into the Salazzo. But the Salazzo did, of course, hang on to that focus sash. But he does now have a Geomancy Turnius. Yeah, um, and I think you can just safely Dazzle and Gleam. I don't think you mind too much uh, getting one Electro Web speed drop, um, because you're still at plus one. You're still going to outspeed everything after that. Um, so yeah, you're, you are going to proc your Sash on this Tapu Koko here, but a Psyshock and a Volt Switch or an Electrap should not be able to pick up the KO on, on Azernius here. No, we do actually see the Tapu Koko for, uh, going for an Electro Web, taking down the Salazzle. But Tapu Koko says was broken, and we do actually see Lunala just going for a Psyshock here, yeah. but it's just not really going to do the damage that no, it needs that to do. No, that does barely anything. That's really, that's really disappointing damage there. and. Yeah, Xerneas, even though its speed is dropped at one stage, it's still going to outspeed all of these Pokémon. And now we have in the same position again where, yes, you knock out the Salazzo, but it did its job. It taunted this Lunala, and now all you do is you help David bring in uh, his Cartana, which is going to outspeed and threaten this Lunala. And at this point, I'm not sure what Leonardo can do. I mean, now he really needs this Amoongus in the back. Um, but if he does, even if he has the Amoongus in the back, then he's going to struggle against Cartana. Yeah, maybe his last option is something like Amoongus with red card, just making sure that the Xerneas switches out. Yeah, but then, but then you're still going to struggle against Cartana yeah. because the Coco is really low, uh, the Lunala is really low as well, and he's not going to switch either one of his Pokémon here. No, we do just see it going for a big Dazzling Gleam here. The Lunala is hanging on, but it's Cartana just wouldn't knock off. It's going to be able to just yeah. take out this Lunanala here. And David is just going for the same place as he actually did in game one, but it's working out so well. And I think Leonora may, may just not have enough things to stop the Cernius because Yeah, but it's, it's like we predicted as well. Like, I think I think he should have brought the Amoongus earlier. And I think David realized that, like, okay, my opponent is not bringing Amoongus. Then I'm just going to go with my Xerneas setup again. Uh, and it really works out. And I see why uh, Leonardo tried to sec both of his Pokemon there, because at least now he brings in his own Xerneas. Uh, he has the fake out uh, setup option, but uh, we're, we're in the same position as game one, which exactly. means that this Cortana has knockoff. Uh, it's not an Electro Web yet. So either one, okay, he, yes, he can fake out the Xerneas, but then the Xerneas in the opposing side gets knocked off. Uh, if he fakes out the Cortana, the Xerneas from David is going to one hit KO the Xerneas on Leonardo's side with a Moonblast. So at this point, it's going to be really tough. And we see a fake out going into the Xerneas. Yeah. So he may be just going. We actually, Cortana oh. is not going for what? a knockoff here. It's just going for a sacred sword into this Incineroar. So maybe the Xerneas is just going for a Moonblast, just being scared of that knockoff. And it's not going to no, be enough. But enough. it did get a special attack drop there. Mm. But I think. It might actually matter because I think now the Moonblast shouldn't be able to KO Xerneas. Uh, does it? Um, yeah, it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be able to KO the Xerneas now at this point. But it, it doesn't matter in the long run because now you can just Moonblast the Incineroar and knock off the Xerneas. Um, if you can't UMNC, then this Assault Vest Cartana should just be able to wall the Xerneas from this point. Um, so that that kind of makes the Sacred Sword play uh, make a little bit more sense there. And Dazzling Gleam should also pick up the KO on Incineroar as it does. Yeah, definitely. And we do see the Xerneas going down to half health and Cortana, you know, just yeah, going gonna be enough. For, for a smart strike. Definitely going to be enough to pick up the uh, Xerneas here with a critical hit. Yeah, we had so many critical matter. hits in this game, but it really, really didn't no. matter here. And David, actually, I think we kind of saw a replay of game one. Yeah, I, we saw game one just two times <laughs> in, in game one and game three. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's really surprising how that, how that works out for him. I mean, I guess if your game plan works uh, one time, why not Why not do it again? <laughs> yeah, I think David was just knowing, okay, um, Leonardo didn't bring this Amoongus in game no. two, and maybe he's just not going to bring it in game two tree as well and he had such a like strong um, game plan there ag against Leonardo's team that I don't think he could have done that much. No, no it's just uh, yeah, I, f I feel like Leonardo's team kind of struggled against the Xerneas. Yes he had Psych up but his own only other answer really was his own Xerneas or the Amoongus mode and we already saw he didn't really like to go into the Amoongus mode in this kind of matchup uh, so that really only leaves that Psych up option. Um, so yeah that's just David just, just going for the same place again. Uh, but really well played by him. Um, it's really surprising to see how this Salazzo, even though all it did was it taunt a Pokemon, it taunted a Pokemon, and it's it all it needed to do. It just and went for Sludge Bomb. And yeah, but it, that's all it needed, because that's all Cernius needed to set up, and that basically sealed the game from that point. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, really well played by David, and we will definitely be bringing him right here for, uh, for a winner's interview. Yeah, and I think the Salazzo was a really, really good choice for David here. Oh, I think yeah. Just making sure, you know, it actually learns uh, fake out and taunt, is e able to hit a lot of things with like yeah. Touch Bomb. 
I think it was a really, really good player, and I think Leonardo really, really didn't have a game plan against us because there's a very high chance he may have just never faced his Alesso with, with his <laughs> team. Yeah. Yeah, you don't see that a lot at all. So, uh, yeah, don't go anywhere yet. We're going to be right back uh, with the interview with David, so uh, we'll see you in a few seconds. So, welcome back, guys. I'm here with the winner of this uh, Round 7 match, David Kutesh. David, how are you feeling? Oh, yeah, really feeling good right now. Like, 6-1 is a good score, and I should guarantee the CP, so... Yeah. I'm happy, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think you're, yeah, you're kind of safe for top 60 now at this point, aren't you? How, do you, do you have any yes. idea how your resistance is right now? I don't know, really, but I hope it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it should be decently at this point, right? Uh, I just I just really want to talk about the Salazzle on that team. That was a really interesting pick. Uh, how has it been doing for you all day? Well, Salazzle was really important in a lot of cases today. Uh, that taunt is really good against uh, Xerneas and Granon teams. Mm -hmm. you, like, uh, first off, you're a faster, fa faster fake out than the Incineroar. And second off, you can taunt the Xerneas before it can uh, uh, Geomancy, yeah. Right. And Overheat does a lot of damage to, against Groudon. Mm, yeah, of course. Yeah, especially in the sun, obviously. Um, yeah, I was, I was, I was going to ask you as well. In uh, in game one, did you expect that psych up from that? Well, uh, spoiler alert: I faced Roar Lunala in round one, and oh, wow. uh, round before this, I faced another psych up Lunala. So mm. at this point, when I see Lunala as the lead against Xerneas, I kind of expect Roar or <laughs> psych up. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even know Lunala gets Roar, but that's <laughs> that's a good reason to taunt it then. Um, we were kind of both. We were at both at the casting desk. We were kind of saying like, uh, how your game one was pretty similar to your game three. Uh, like when you went with your Xerneas mode, everything went well. Salazar got off the taunt, and Xerneas just swept. Has that has that been all your game so far in this in this tournament, or um, have you also brought your Groudon mode a lot? Oh uh, yeah, I brought my Groudon against some teams, but yet I'm have to face Kyogre. I didn't face a single Kyogre today. Oh, wow. so like, yeah, but I lead sometimes uh, differently against some kind of teams. I don't remember against which, but I know it, it has other leads, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I really like your team so far. Uh, any any shout-outs you want to give? Um, any friends here in the, you want to you wanna say uh, thank uh, you to? Oh, definitely Oliver. Oliver Escon is a good friend for me, and we float a lot. And, yeah, that's about it, I think. Okay, well, good luck for you in the rest of your, of your matches. Uh, I hope we're going to see you later then uh, in day two for top 16. I uh, don't want to jinx anything yet, obviously, but um, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to see you guys later for uh, round eight, uh, last round of the day. Um, so don't go anywhere, and we'll be back in a few minutes.